We begin today's show looking at a major provision in President Biden's $1.9 trillion COVID relief bill that aims to address decades of discrimination against black, Hispanic, Native American and Asian American farmers who have historically been excluded from government agricultural programs. The American Rescue Plan sets aside $10.4 billion for agriculture support and allocates about half the funds to farmers of color who are, quote, subjected to racial or ethnic prejudice because of their identity as members of a group, unquote. The U.S. Commission on Civil Rights confirmed as long ago as 1965 the U.S. Department of Agriculture discriminated against black farmers, but little was done to address the problem, and the number of black-run farms dropped 96 percent in the last century. By 98 percent of all agricultural land was owned by white people. In 2010, Congress approved a $1.2 billion settlement for thousands of black farmers denied USDA loans because of their race. But a 2019 study by the Government Accountability Office, based on the USDA's own data, shows farmers and ranchers of color continue to receive disproportionately smaller farm loans. The provision in the new COVID relief package is drawn from legislation introduced by newly elected Democratic Senator Raphael Warnock of Georgia, who is Georgia's first black senator and also the first Georgia Democrat to serve on the Agriculture Committee in three decades. Agriculture Secretary Tom Vilsack welcomed the measure. The history of USDA unfortunately involved a level, a level of discrimination against a, a number of minority producers, uh, black farmers, uh, Native American farmers, Hispanic farmers. Um, and there is an effort, I think, with this package to try to deal not with the specific acts of discrimination, but the cumulative effect over a period of time. Uh, when people are discriminated against, they basically get behind, and it's really hard for them ever to catch up. And the result, of course, is that we've seen a significant decline in the number of minority producers around the country. So this is providing some debt relief uh, for those minority producers, those socially disadvantaged producers, um, to impact and affect the cumulative effect of, uh, to offset the cumulative effect of discrimination over a period of time. But the effort to address the USDA's history of racism has come under fire from some Republicans, including Republican Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina, who lashed out against the measure during a Fox News interview. Let me give you an example of something that really bothers me. In this bill, if you're a farmer, your loan will be forgiven up to 120 percent of your loan, not 100 percent, but 120 percent of your loan if you're socially disadvantaged, if you're African-American, some other minority. But if you're white person, if you're a white woman, no forgiveness as reparations. What does that got to do with COVID? So if you're in the farming business right now, this bill forgives 120 percent of your loan based on your race. These people in the Congress today, the House and the Senate on the Democratic side, are out of control liberals. Senator Graham's comments prompted a stern response from House Majority Whip James Clyburn, who's also from South Carolina. He was speaking on CNN. Leslie Graham is from South Carolina. He knows South Carolina's history. He knows what the state of South Carolina and this country has done to black farmers in South Carolina. They didn't do it to white farmers. We are trying to rescue the lives and livelihoods of people. He ought to be ashamed of himself. For more on the fight to end discrimination at the USDA and restore land to black farmers, we go to Boyton, Virginia, to speak with John Boyd, fourth-generation black farmer, founder and president of the nonprofit National Black Farmers Association. John, welcome back to Democracy Now! It's great to have you with us. Can you start off by talking about this $5 billion and what it means? Give us the history. The five billion dollars is uh, historic in nature, Amy, and, and thank you for having me again. Uh, and what it's going to do to help uh, black farmers and farmers of color in this country. You know, as you know, uh, we've been suffering, and uh, the, the five billion dollars calls for debt relief. Uh, so that would give uh, many black farmers uh, a jump start if they can get rid of the debt at the United States Department of Agriculture. And there's one billion dollars. Uh, uh, to set aside for technical assistance and outreach and, and to really dig down into the core of the discrimination at the United States Department of Agriculture. Both of these measures I've been fighting for 
for over 30 years. So I don't want anybody who's watching this show to think that this is some new measure that uh, or new idea or concept uh, that, that happened overnight. I've been trying to fix this, this measure for over 30 years at the United States Department of Agriculture. And Amy, I, I probably spoke to you about it 10 years ago. Uh, so we've been trying a long time, and this is a, a huge victory for black farmers and farmers of color, Native Americans and Hispanics and other socially disadvantaged uh, our farmers. Can you explain how, over the last century, black farmers lost 90 percent of their land? Yes. Yes. And uh, at the turn of the century, uh, it was, we were tilling about 20, 20 million acres of land, primarily in the southeastern corridor of the United States. And we were close to one million black farm families uh, strong. And for those who don't understand the history, every black person in this country was one or two generations away uh, from somebody's farm. And, and we survived slavery. We survived uh, uh, sharecropping. We survived uh, Jim Crow. And uh, here we are in, in, in the year 2021, and I'm talking to you about discrimination at the United States Department of Agriculture. We lost this land by discrimination, from receiving discrimination by USDA. And I was uh, one of those recipients uh, where the government clearly discriminated against me. I have a 14-page uh, uh, letter from them admitting to the guilt and those egregious acts that I faced by this county official, the person responsible for making farm loans, spat on me and used uh, racial epithets, uh, referred to me and other senior state statesmen in Mecklenburg County, Virginia, as boy. Uh, he came to my farm, uh, wanted me to sign a check over to him personally with a loaded handgun. And I can tell you, Amy, he didn't treat white farmers that way in Mecklenburg County. He would only see black farmers on Wednesday. All of us would be lined up in the hallway with the same date and time on it. And uh, he was referring to these elderly black farmers. Many were deacons and preachers and, and leaders in the community as boy and talking downward towards them. Uh, so this is deep-rooted uh, uh, discrimination that's been going on in very pervasive ways for a very, very long time. Can you respond to Senator Lindsey Graham and talk about the history of yes. Lindsey Graham from South Carolina when it comes to this issue? Yes. Well, first of all, I've lobbied uh, Senator Graham as, as when he was in the, in the House and in the Senate. And I've had uh, meetings with him and buttonhole meetings, uh, getting, trying to get him to support the Claims Remedy Act of 2010. He has over 6,000 black farmers in his state. He knows the discrimination that I'm about, and I've talked, I've spoken to him personally about this discrimination. Amy, he never once used his mega, megaphone to talk about or investigate uh, the acts of, of, of discrimination uh, that black farmers like myself faced. So I'm calling for today on your show. I want him to apologize to the black community, to black farmers, and apologize to this country for his wrong stance on this. Uh, 49, 49 members uh, voted on 10 different amendments uh, uh, to, to strip or lessen the, the language that, that was in the, the, the COVID spending bill for, for black farmers. 49 senators, Republican senators, voted to take that out. And Lindsey, Senator Lindsey Graham was one of them. He's never tried to help. He's divisive. He's wrong for this country. And uh, that message, that concept, the message of hate, hatred and division uh, that he continues to preach on Fox News isn't the American way. That's not the way to bring America back. Here we are for 30 years trying to get this done. He should have took some time to say, well, what can we do to, to help this uh, measure, to, to, make, to make farming better for, for blacks and other farmers in this country? And he never once spoke about all of the money going to white farmers. Just, for example, under the Trump administration, $29 million, $29 billion, with a B, went to white farmers. What is his definition of that? All of the subsidies and programs and loans and all of these incentives at USDA for all of these decades have went to white farmers. What is his definition of that? Uh, so that's what we've been talking about clearly for a long time, a system that has discriminated and mistreated and took and stole land from 
black farmers for decades, and it went unchecked in this country. If he wanted to check something, he should have been checking about discrimination at USDA. He should have been checking about sharecropping in his in his uh, historic states, uh, South Carolina. These are things that Senator Lindsey Graham should have been doing. And the significance of it being Reverend Warnock, now Senator Warnock from Georgia, the new Democratic senator, um, being the one who pushed this forward and sitting on the Agriculture Committee. Yes. That's a, this is a his, historic nature. And my hat goes off to uh, Reverend Warnock, uh, uh, Senator Cory Booker. For the first time in history, uh, Amy, this is a this is a new day in America. We have two uh, blacks on the Senate Ag Committee. We have the uh, chairman in the House, uh, Chairman uh, Scott from uh, also from Georgia, uh, uh, a chairman of the Senate Agriculture Committee. We have uh, now a president, President Biden, and a vice president who wants to help uh, rectify some of the problems uh, uh, that we faced in. And I spoke to uh, the president about this last February, and he committed to me that uh, he would help me fix uh, the issues at the United States Department of Agriculture. So I would like to recognize President Biden for, for, for signing that bill and making sure that uh, we stayed in there. So my hat is off right now to this administration for doing the right thing and having the guts to stand up to people like Lindsey Graham and the other 49 senators who simply don't want to help people, black farmers and poor people in this country. I wanted to ask you about Tom Vilsack, uh, the new, once again, head, but also past head of the USDA. The NAACP has noted Vilsack had lied to conceal decades of discrimination against black farmers. The NAACP president, Derek Johnson, responded to Biden's uh, nomination of Vilsack to head the USDA, calling it extremely problematic for the African-American community. He cited the 2010 controversy, when Vilsack served as agriculture Culture Secretary during the Obama administration and fired Shirley Sherrod from her USDA position overseeing rural development amidst a misunderstanding over racial comments. Vilsack would later apologize. Johnson told The Washington Post, quote, We think that an individual who unjustifiably fired Shirley Sherrod, who is a civil rights icon, a legend who worked with John Lewis, should not be considered. We should not go backward. We should go forward. Well, uh, in fact, uh, Vilsack is once again the head of the USDA. John Boyd, have you spoken to him, and what are you demanding? Well, two things. Yes, I have spoken to him. And one of the things that uh, President Biden also committed uh, to me during our one on one visit uh, in South Carolina that there would be change in leadership at uh, USDA. So when they announced that uh, Secretary Vilsack was coming back, uh, to you, to uh, USDA, uh, he was not my pick, and he wasn't the pick for for black farmers. Uh, he was the pick that President Biden wanted to come back. I wanted new blood, new leadership. Uh, someone would take a much more aggressive uh, campaign against this discrimination at the United States Department of Agriculture. And Amy, when I lobbied uh, all of those years for the Claims Remedy Act of 2010, that put in place uh, 1.25 billion dollars for for black farmers. Uh, Secretary Vilsack was, in my opinion, too slow to act. Uh, I didn't get the help on Capitol Hill, neither in the House or the Senate. And uh, Valerie Jarrett, uh, from the White House, the last five or six months, uh, got on board and began to, to campaign to help me pay, pass that measure in the, in the House and Senate. So I didn't think he was the right person, but uh, I spoke to him here a couple of days ago, and uh, he congratulated me on, on the measure in the bill. But I also urged him to put in swift action to make sure that these payments and the debt relief and all of these measures, the outreach and technical assistance, reach black farmers and farmers of color expeditiously. Not to sit on it and try to figure out how a plan of action. If we can get $1,400 in the, the, the mailbox and direct deposit into Americans, then we can disperse and, and relieve debts for black and farmers of color expeditiously. And I urged him to do that. Uh, and finally, you mentioned the Trump administration and black farmers, farmers of color. Um, how does it fit into uh, past presidents? How would you assess the Trump administration? Worst administration in history for black farmers since my 30, 38 years of, of doing this kind of work, Amy. My visit, and I've had the opportunity to sit down with every agriculture secretary 
uh, both Republican and Democrat, uh, in the cage at USDA. Uh, and and Secretary, former Secretary Sonny Perdue, uh, in my visit with him was the worst con conversation I ever had. He said, uh, Mr. Boyd, that your farmers, uh, i.e. black farmers, are going to have to get large or get out of business. And when I urged him to have more blacks on the county committees and, and all of the USDA commissions, he said he didn't need people that were, were lazy and didn't want to work. Uh, how egregious and, 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 and uh, 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 for Secretary, former Secretary Sonny Perdue to say that. I told him that uh, I didn't know any black farmers that are still farming, that have been treated worse than dirt by USDA, that are lazy and don't want to work. Now, Amy, I work seven days a week, including holidays and, and Christmas, and I've been working all of my life, and that's the way many black farmers have. The, the issue here is, is we haven't had access to credit the way that the white farmers have. And for that type of position uh, from the Trump administration set us back a little further. Uh, and not, not only just in black farmers, but in race relations in this country, the Trump administration set black people and divided this country. And our former secretary, Sonny Perdue, was at the core of that, uh, taking land away from black farmers. Uh, he didn't even have an assistant secretary for civil rights, a position that I lobbied for and campaigned for for many years to get into the farm bill. They didn't even fill that position. So what does that tell you about the Trump administration's commitment to on civil rights and resolving uh, complaints from black and other socially disadvantaged farmers? Uh, uh, Sonny, Sonny Perdue gets an F from me, and I hope he uh, heads, head, heads to retirement in, in politics, because he really, he really done a bad number on blacks and other, other farmers of color in this country.